Now, at this point, let's shift our attention to this side here. So, this is the formula. The, so, what does this mean? Well, first of all, the scripts, the v's are for the velocity. But the subscripts here, n is for notch, and g is for ground, and s is for skateboard. So, imagine me on a skateboard, okay, and I am trying to move on top of the skateboard itself, okay, and at the same time move with the uh, skateboard. So in this case, my velocity with respect to the ground is going to be equal to my velocity with respect to the skateboard plus my velocity with respect to, you know, um, the velocity of the skateboard with respect to the ground. Of course, there's nothing special about skateboards. The S here, for example, could be an airplane or it could be a train or it could be a car. It doesn't matter. Now, in uh, our textbook and in many places, usually this is not written like this. Instead, it's written S equals U plus V. Well, it shouldn't scare you. It's just the same expression, but using different letters. So I'm going to use that just to illustrate the ideas that I'm going to illustrate here. Now, here's the problem with this. This is the Galilean, you know, uh, relativity expressed whenever you've got an object moving within a system that is also moving with respect to yet another system. Now, if you happen to have the object in question being the speed of light, then this S is going to be involving the following. So let's say I'm in a spaceship, and the spaceship, if, and again if, the spaceship is moving at the speed C, and I am shining a light beam forward, that's at speed C. C plus C will give us 2C, well, that's a problem because we already established that according to Einstein's postulate number 2, that no object is supposed to have a speed that is exceeding the speed of light C. So, this, which is the Galilean relativity, is good as long as I am dealing with objects that are not moving, you know, with relativistic speeds. The minute you start having objects moving with relativistic speeds, this formula does not cut it anymore. As you can see, it gives us something that doesn't make sense. So what did Einstein come up with? Einstein come up, came up with the following. He said that you would have S equals U plus V. Notice here how it matches with the... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving out the vector symbols. That does not mean it's not a vector expression. But just, you know, uh, to save myself time. Divided by, notice here, he still has the Galilean portion of it, but then he added his own term, which is this. And my friends, this makes the whole big difference in the world. Of course, if you wanted to add vectors, then you would have to do this, and this will have to be turned into what we call the dot product, and you end up with an expression that looks like this. Okay, so... Does this somehow save us from this disaster? You bet your life. Let's see an example of how that works. Okay, so here we go. Once again, so this is the same formula that is, you know, discovered by Galileo, okay, but reinterpreted by Einstein to fit his postulates of special theory of relativity, especially postulate number two. So, in this case, we're going to test this here so you would see how it works in the extreme case where you have, we know that there is no spaceship that's going to be able to move. Even if you take a spaceship that moves at half the speed of light, okay, and you shine a beam that moves, you know, who, you know a beam of light where light is moving at uh, C, classically, you would say that's C plus half C, that's three and a half C, or three half C. Well, that's 1.5 C, that's bigger than C already, so that would be as problematic as that. So we're going to test it, you know, uh, test this formula right here for the extreme case. Imagine, for example, there is an object that is, you know, uh, let's say a rocket, for example, moving at the speed of light, and then you're shining a light beam at, of course, that is moving already at the speed of light. So in that case, look at what happens here. It's so neat. You're going to end up with C plus C, because that would be the speed of light itself, okay? And then this is the speed of, uh, of the rocket, let's say, for example, C. One plus, and then C times C, because I have U times V, so I have to multiply whatever is up here, 
and then divide it by c squared. Notice how this would give you 2c at the bottom, at the part, top rather, and then 1 plus c squared over c squared. Notice how c squared and c squared will cancel out, you end up with 1. Therefore, you end up with 2c over 2, and nice. Which means that according to this, even if you go to the extreme case of imagining something that is moving at the speed of light, and you shine a light beam at the speed of light, the speed of light overall, for all observers, is going to be always C no matter what. That's sweet. Now, of course, if, for example, let's say uh, we're dealing with a situation where you shine a light beam in a situation where the spaceship, let's say, for example, is moving at half the speed of light, then you would have to do, you know, so uh, in other words, we're saying, let's say u is equal to c, uh, v is equal to half c, okay? I'll leave it to you to work this out to see what would the s be in this case. Thank you very much. That's it.